GM, GM, my fellow Alorians, welcome back to another episode of Alora Dev Pills. In past tutorials, we talked about how to deploy an inference worker to the network, how to configure that inference worker to produce unique and valuable inferences, and finally, how to configure a rep beater, which provides the ground source truth to score different inference workers and weight them according to their performance. Now we're going to get into topics, specifically what consists of a topic, including the target variable and rule set, as well as the different parameters you need to know about in order to configure a topic on the network and start creating whole new use cases for what Allura can provide to consumers. Before we dive into how to create a topic, I wanna to go over where topics sit in the network and why they're important. So at its core, Allura provides inferences to consumers. Those inferences are produced by workers, synthesized by the network, and then requested by consumers. In that response flow, the consumer gets a synthesized aggregated inference that will always be better than any individual worker's outputted inference. How However, workers need to know what to predict. A topic is like a blueprint for an inference task. It's the central structure that defines how predictions are made, how performance is evaluated, and how rewards are distributed to contributors. In our general flow, any external third party can permissionlessly create a topic. Consumers would query that topic and workers would join that topic. The topic consists of a target variable and a loss function, which are packaged into a rule set. That rule set consists of some other parameters that need to be configured, that we'll dive into in order to understand the broader scope of what a topic defines in that blueprint. So now that we understand topics at a high level, we're gonna dive into how to create a topic and every variable that you need to know about at a deeper level in order to build a topic successfully. First variable is the creator. This is pretty straightforward. This is just the address of the wallet that will own the topic. The second is the metadata, and this provides information about the topic. It's essentially like a mission statement for the topic. It tells workers, reputers, and consumers what the topic is trying to accomplish. The third variable we need to configure when creating a topic is a loss method. Loss method is the way that we measure accuracy for a topic. It specifies how the accuracy of a prediction is calculated from an inference worker and determines how much penalty or loss a worker incurs for making an inaccurate prediction. I'm going to explain the next three variables, epoch length, ground truth lag, and worker submission window in the context of an analogy. Imagine you're part of a team predicting the weather for tomorrow, and every 10 minutes you have to submit your best guess on what the temperature will be. Let's break down how this prediction life cycle works using this analogy. First, we have the epic length, which sets the rhythm for the predictions. In this case, every 10 minutes, you're required to submit a new forecast for what the temperature will be one day into the future. It's like being a weather forecaster on a tight schedule. Every 10 minutes, you submit in what you think the temperature will be for tomorrow at that exact time. Next, there's the worker submission window. Imagine that you only have a limited amount of time during that 10 minute window to submit your prediction. If after a couple of minutes, with that couple of minutes being the worker submission window, you don't submit your prediction, your prediction won't be logged in that epoch and you'll have to submit your prediction in the next epoch to be counted. Finally, we have the ground truth lag. The ground truth lag is one day in this analogy. You don't get immediate feedback for what the prediction a day into the future will be. Tomorrow, when the day actually arrives, the truth, the actual temperature will be revealed. This is the waiting period. If you've been predicting the temperature at 2 p.m. for tomorrow, you won't know how accurate you are until 2 p.m. comes. That's the ground truth lag. The next two variables we're gonna talk about are p-norm and alpha regret. p-norm is about rewarding accuracy. It's a number between 2.5 and 4.5 that adjusts how much the system favors high quality predictions over low quality ones. A higher p-norm value amplifies the rewards for the most accurate predictions, while lower values distribute rewards more evenly. Second, we have alpha regret. Alpha regret is about balancing performance history. It controls how much the system considers a worker past performance when determining rewards. It's a number between zero and one, and a lower value means that past performance has a strong influence, while a higher value makes recent performance more important than past performance. It's like deciding whether you want to reward consistency or recent improvement in a model. 
Final two values we're going to define before diving into merit-based sortitioning are allow negative and epsilon. Allow negative manages loss calculations and determines whether a loss function can result in negative values. If false, the loss values are always logged in a specific standardized way with only positive numbers being logged. If true, it allows for more flexibility by using raw loss values, which could include negative numbers. If this value is set to false, then rep eaters set submit logs of losses so that the losses are always positive. Final two values we're going to define before diving into merit-based sortitioning are allow negative and epsilon. Allow negative manages loss calculations and determines whether a loss function can result in negative values. If false, the loss values are always logged in a specific standardized way with only positive numbers being logged. If true, it allows for more flexibility by using raw loss values, which could include negative numbers. If this value is set to false, then rep eaters set submit logs of losses so that the losses are always positive. Second value is epsilon which is precision in evaluating loss. Epsilon sets the threshold for how precisely the system distinguishes between predictions. If you set epsilon to 0.1, it means that predictions within a 0.1 range are considered the same in terms of accuracy. Let's say two workers submit predictions for Ethereum's price. One predicts 1507 cents and the other predicts 1506 cents. With epsilon set to 0.1, the system sees both predictions as essentially identical because the difference between them, 0.01, is smaller than the 0.1 threshold. In this case, the system won't distinguish between the two workers' predictions, and both will be scored equally. If you want to account for even small differences like that 0.01 variation, you'd need a lower epsilon to a smaller value like 0.01, making the system more sensitive to subtle differences. Mm -hmm.